Hey, today we will take a look at the different types of COVID vaccines. But before that, let's understand what a vaccine does inside the body. Taking a vaccine is like conducting a fire drill, preparing a defense strategy to get ready for the real fire, or perhaps like taking a mock test to get ready for the final exam. Vaccines safely expose our body to the pathogen or the disease causing organisms. These could be viruses, bacteria, fungi or parasites. A vaccination is somewhat like showing us a photograph of the enemy for us to be able to remember it. Basically, our immune system recognizes the intruder and fights it off using antibodies without really making us sick. And while this happens, the immune system memorizes the details of the intruder. So in case of a real infection, it is well armed and prepared. And all this happens with this tiny amount of liquid. Now we have a detailed video on how all this happens in the body and you can find the link below. But for now, let's talk about the different types of vaccines. Vaccines in general have been developed with three different approaches. Ones that use a whole pathogen or the entire virus or bacteria. Two that use parts or subunits of the virus and three, the ones that use only the genetic material of the virus. Let's take a look at the first approach. Back in 1879, Louis Pasteur developed the first known vaccine for chicken cholera by a chance discovery. He noticed a culture of disease-causing pathogens which had weakened over time. This pathogen was no longer as deadly as the actual virus. So when this weakened pathogen was injected into the body as a vaccine, it acted like an injured and harmless enemy soldier walking right into our camp. The body recognized it as an intruder, antibodies were developed and stored in memory. The enemy soldier or virus on the other hand was so weak that it could barely cause any damage and it soon died. This type of vaccine is called the live attenuated vaccine. Now since this vaccine uses the whole pathogen, there was still a tiny chance that the bacteria or virus could begin multiplying within the body. Therefore, it has to go through extensive testing before it can be injected into patients. Next, the scientists decided to expose this virus to extreme heat and radiation to kill it. The dead virus would no longer be able to multiply, but it would still look exactly like the live virus. So clever! And with high safety standards, this one could be delivered to people of all age groups. This second kind of whole virus vaccine is called the inactivated vaccine. The COVID vaccine created in India, Covaxin, is an example of an inactivated vaccine. Now, these are conventional approaches to making vaccines. Let's learn about some next-gen approaches. The second approach to making vaccines was to use only a small part of the pathogen and not the whole virus or bacteria. Scientists thought, what if we introduce into the body the most prominent feature of SARS-CoV-2 or the coronavirus, the spike protein. What do you think is going to happen? Yes, you're right. The immune system recognizes it as a foreign body and it continues to produce antibodies against it. But the body would face no risk. These types of vaccines are called subunit vaccines. They contain only a small harmless part of the virus which is enough to trigger the immune system. However, there is a chance that this spike protein alone may not get the attention of the immune system. That's why subunit vaccines contain another ingredient, an adjuvant. An adjuvant wakes up the immune system to recognize the subunit antigen. The COVID vaccine made by the company Novavax uses this approach. 
But the greatest challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic was to produce large volumes of vaccines in the shortest possible time. So while the conventional approaches were tried and tested, the actual large-scale production of a whole virus or even a subunit vaccine could take several years. And this is where the third approach comes in. Vaccines that use the genetic material of the virus. So this time, the scientists thought, instead of injecting the virus or the spike protein into the body, how about we make the body produce its own spike protein? Hmm. And they came up with two types of COVID vaccines based on this idea. Let's look at them one by one. The first one is the mRNA vaccine. So what is an mRNA? An mRNA is a messenger, a messenger RNA. It is created from the DNA in the nucleus of a cell and it carries instructions to make a specific kind of protein. The messenger RNA travels out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where the protein manufacturing machinery of the cell reads those instructions and starts to manufacture the spike protein. And did you know that this mRNA is a super temporary messenger? It gives the instruction and then dies off. A bit like a disappearing message on your favorite app. By the way, you will also get a lot of interesting information about DNA and RNA at the Baiju's app. So the idea behind the mRNA vaccine was to use the machinery of our own body to produce the harmless spike protein by itself. The vaccine contains a modified mRNA of the coronavirus. And once this enters the body, it programs our cells to start producing the spike proteins. The immune system recognizes the spike protein as an intruder and a mini war begins right inside our arm. P.S. That is why our arm feels sore after a vaccine shot. But it's all good. Whoa! All this without ever seeing the virus? However, the challenge here was the fragile nature of the mRNA. To help it survive, the mRNA is wrapped inside lipid nanoparticles, like butter droplets, if you can imagine. This coat keeps them stable and easily injectable into our cells. Unlike the conventional vaccines, the mRNA approach makes the vaccine production super fast, low cost and scalable. COVID vaccines created by Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech have used this technology to produce their vaccines. Now, one of the limitations of these vaccines is that they have to be stored and transported at extremely low temperatures, which makes it a challenge for wide scale distribution. And now let's talk about the last type of COVID vaccine, the viral vector vaccine. This one also uses the third approach of using genetic material. A viral vector vaccine is like taking a car, modifying its engine based on your requirements and sending the car off on your own secret mission. A bit like a sci-fi movie, isn't it? A viral vector vaccine has two elements, the shell or the viral vector, which is the car and the genetic material inside our modified engine. A viral vector vaccine uses a weakened virus as a shell, the car. This can be any virus, even a cold flu virus. The genetic material or the engine of this virus is removed. In place of that, a modified DNA of the coronavirus is inserted. And once this is inside the body, this modified DNA sends out an mRNA, which once again programs our body to produce the spike protein, pretty similar to the mRNA vaccines. A viral vector vaccine tends to be more stable for two reasons. One, it uses the DNA instead of a super temporary mRNA. And second, this DNA is encased in a virus shell. That is why viral vector vaccines can now be stored at more equitable temperatures. Covishield, the vaccine developed by Oxford AstraZeneca, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and Sputnik V made in Russia have used this approach. Interesting, wasn't it? It's all about creating a memory. The only difference is whether you show the real person or a photograph or even a nose or an eye. 
in the end once we create immunity against the pathogen the war will be won for more such interesting content head over to the byju's app